got a Pioneer PD4300 compact disc player. This one's not playing. According to the display, it is. But, uh, well, that's all it does. So here's the inside of this unit. Take a look at the optical pickup. This is uh, not a common pickup. It might be common for Pioneer, but it's not. It's not your common Sanyo or Sony pickup that so many CD players use. If I pop out the clamp, you'll see what this one looks like. If I can get the clamp out of here, it should lift out without breaking, hopefully. Now, there's the pickup there. So here's the pickup. We know it's emitting light only because well, I can put the camera in night shot mode for starters, but uh, it is spinning the discs. But if I put it in night shot mode and close the disc tray, this is, the laser does indeed light up. And it is going through focus. It's not one of these silly pickups that are mounted upside down either. But it does, it does attempt to read. I'm going to put the disc chuck back in again. That goes up there like that. This clamp goes in like this. Like that. They call this a disc stabilizer. Okay, let's just see what it's doing when I throw a disc in. It does read the disc. We'll select play. And the counter is increasing, but there's no sound. Hmm. Could this be an electrical problem? Interesting. Let's tap the circuit board and the sound comes on. I'm curious because it is reading. If we look at the uh, counter on the front here, I'll show you the counter. You see it's reading. Okay, I'm going to do this uh, two cameras. So I got my second camera focused on the scope. This is the RF pattern we're clipped onto here. And we're looking at the RF eye pattern, which don't look too good. We're explaining why it's not reading properly. We're going to try doing some adjustments here. So you guys can see what I'm doing while I'm doing them. Try not to bump the other camera there while I'm doing this. Um, okay, first things first, let's try. We got focus. I think this was this was tracking and this one is focus balance, I think. And we've got laser disc or laser power. We can try increasing the laser power just a little bit and see whether that will. helping a little bit but we're still not getting good read let's just try
possess the one control that snapped off on my scroll. There we go. That's looking better. Okay. I want to try and get that uh, eye pattern as, as uh, sharp as possible. Now we should see the, that's the blank, the two second silence. Get to the next track. increase the laser power too much because I don't want to burn the laser out so pretty much I go for the minimum power that's going to give me an acceptable eye pattern Now, if we have too much gain, you'll hear it squawking. Listen, I'll turn the sound off. Listen. See? So we want to have the minimum amount of gain so this thing's not screeching. It's still allowing it to play. Now you'll notice the only um, the only pattern I'm looking at is the eye pattern. That's really the only one I care about. I'm going to try a couple of other discs on here. Again, this is a CDR. I'm going to try another CDR of a different brand, and then we'll try a silver disc, a stamped disc. So this is one of the low reflectivity discs that, that's running now. I'm going to put in this one which is a little more contrast, we should see a, a larger signal on this disc. See, this is the disc that I had on there. Let's see if this one will read. Okay, now we're getting some noise, so now we're going to tweak this one. Try to get this one to give us the best. That's why it's important to use different discs because different discs have different characteristics, especially when you're dealing with CDRs on these old players. And this one is a, a fairly old player, a PD4300. Four times over sample digital filter. Let's see how we, uh, how we can search tracks out. all the way out to like track number 18 I think or 19 or whatever this has got on it 18 tracks so it got to 18 pretty quick
go back to track number one. There we go, that one's playing okay. I'll try my I'll try my stamped disc next, and then I'm gonna go grab a disc that I know is bad. Now we, we've talked about this before, I've argued with people about CDRs and how long they can last and so forth. I have a couple of very old CDs that are well over 20 years old, but they were Recorded on Princo, which Princo, if anybody knows anything about CDs, Princo was a, a, a disc company that just turned out absolute crap. Now why is it not reading this one? Maybe the laser power is a little too high. interesting it does not want to read a stamped disc that is that is really weird it, it reads a CDR but it does not want to read stamp disk. Why? Reading this just fine now. It should read a stamp disc every bit as well as a, a beat up old. There we go. Now it's reading it. Looks like it. Yeah, it's reading the disc now fine. This has got sound effects on it. I may have been just a little bit hot on my my level. This has got a hundred tracks on this disc, so I'm gonna see if we can search them all out. That's track eight. But it's not a very long disc. I think the running time on this disc is only like 35 minutes. Or no, 53 minutes. So it's not a real long running time on the disc. Anyway, I was starting to talk there before about about old CDRs. There was some there were some really poor quality CDs that were made back in the uh, in the 90s. Princo was one of them and I bought some. And I've had some failures of Princo discs. I've never had any failures of like uh, these ones here, these Fujifilm discs. I've been using these things for, you know, oh, look at how old this disc is. I mean, this disc is probably 20 years old, if not older. And uh, they, they're still fine. This is an eight time record disc. That shows how old this one here is. No problem. None of them. My my 200 disc changers are full of these discs, and they've been in there, you know, since the 90s. And uh, but I've had some Princos that have failed. And I'm going to go grab the Princo that I have trouble playing on some of my players and see whether it will play on this one. Let's just try a few more tracks, and then I'll go grab that disc. I don't expect that it'll play because it won't play on my DVD player. Track 71.
There's a bit of wobble to this disc, I can see it. I don't know how it shows up on camera, but you can see it here. See the, see the black line? So there is a bit of an eccentricity error and it's reflected on the scope. But it's tracking okay, which is all that matters. This is track 93, let's go to track 99. And then track 100 should uh, play after track 99, which is uh, sea lion, no, uh, cats. Cats and then sea lions is the next one, track number 100. And this should be sea lines, I think. Yep, sea lines. So it shows track 99, but it's really playing track 100 because the display only goes up to 99 on these. So let's go back to the CDR, and then I'll, I'm gonna while the CDR is playing, I'll go and I'll grab that other disc, and uh, we'll see what it does. I can't play it though because it's got, uh, I think it's got Chuck Loeb on it, so I can't play the music. But I want to see if it'll play without, uh, see, how, see what it does. Oh, that's good. So this disc should not play. This is a Prinko crap disc. If we look on it, any of these discs made by Prinko probably will not, will not play because the die that they used on them was crap. And this disc will not play on my DVD player. Let's see what it does on this. Watch it play on this one. It, it shouldn't play because it won't play on my DVD player. I've been going through my 200 disc changer and I bought some of these discs. And uh, I bought a, a spindle of them. And every single one of these Prinko discs, every single one, does not play. And this is no different on this. It doesn't play. No surprise. Fortunately, I, it was just a backup disc. So, it's not like I lost anything. But, uh, yeah, the, the Prinko discs, if you run into any of these Prinko CDRs, yeah, good luck trying to play them. They just were just junk right out of the out of the spindle they were junk they were peddled by many companies that pedal just junk garbage and that is one of these are one of the reasons that CDR got such a bad name for storing music this is why because this crap so this one's gonna play again and then I'm gonna put the other disc back in the the Staples branded disc See, that one plays. Search all the tracks out. Track 6. Track 10. Track 12. This one plays perfect. I'll load the other disc once again. So this is the Staples branded disc. <laughs> my alignment is just a little bit off let me just tweak tweaking it for this one a bit Just when I thought I had it.
So the, these controls, uh, focus balance, focus gain, and tracking gain are the three, the three controls I was turning there. We'll make sure it can play all the discs again. Go through all the discs. Make sure I'm able to play the three different types of discs here that I've been testing it with. Wow, look at the waveform there. I like my discs for being clean. A lot of scratches on this disc that might affect it a bit, but uh, Okay, it seems to be tracking this disc okay now. We'll try the other disc again and then the, then the stamped disc one more time. That's track 20, that's the last track on this disc. This is an 80 minute disc that's recorded all the way out to the edge. Of course CDs, as you guys probably know, start from the center and work their way out. So we'll try the other CDR and then I will put the, uh, the, the stamped disc back in and see what happens. This is a 74 minute disc, this one, only 18 tracks on it. You can see the higher level on this one, higher output level.
more contrast on this type of uh, this type of disc with the darker dye. Now this one seems to be okay now. Watch the stamp disc not work. That'll be my luck, the stamp disc won't play. So that one's working. We'll try the, uh, the, the, the pre-recorded stamped disc and see whether it plays okay. When you're setting up CD players, it's always important to try different types of discs. To make sure that they all play because it's possible that you get your setup good for one type of disc and the next disc won't play that's why I use three different discs I use a stamp disc and I use a, an older CDR and a newer CDR just because um, they all have different characteristics and different reflectivities okay that one's working so I'm going to try this other one, this Printco one that wouldn't read it all before and see if I get anything else that happens. I don't think it's going to read anything. Yeah, look at the scope. Look at the scope. Oh, my camera's still going. I know the battery's getting a bit low on this one, but yeah, this one wouldn't even read. Like, it wouldn't even read that disc. That shows how bad that disc is. And it, does, it doesn't surprise me because this won't read on my DVD player either. I started going through, as I was saying, I started going through the Prinko discs that were in my changer because every so often I'd hear something skip. Uh, what the hell? A disc, something is skipping? And I'd pull the disc out and check it and, ah, it's a Prinko. Damn. And every single time I've heard when I've been listening to my 200 disc changer with the disc, I mean, this was recorded a long time ago to begin with. But every time I hear one that gives me trouble, I open it up and it's a Prinko disc. So I go and I burn it again on a proper disc. Anyway, so I didn't expect that that was going to do anything because that disc is shot. I think uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, this one's operational now. I'll just try the two CDRs one more time and make sure that they read, and uh, then we'll we'll finish this one up. So there's there's the more modern disc. Okay, look at our levels here, and then I'll change to the other disc. Here we go. Okay. I think this one's done. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. This is another CD player that's mine. This came out of that estate. So this is my unit as well. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.